calculating a sum. In Excel, you can easily can perform calculations using a function or a predefined formula. When you use functions, Excel performs the calculations for you, which helps to prevent errors and allows you to work more efficiently. The first calculation is to determine the total income for wages and dividends in the month of January. The sum function adds all the numbers in a range of cells. A range is a series of two or more adjacent cells in a column, row, or rectangular group. Click cell B6 to make it the active cell. Make sure you're on your home tab and you'll see this button over here called Auto Sum. If you'll go ahead and click on Auto Sum, when you click on Auto Sum, Excel thinks for you and it says, okay, this is where I'm at. I think this person wants me to add these two numbers right here. So you have the numbers highlighted. You have this little marquee around them. You have their cell reference right here. Also, if you look up in the formula bar, you will also see their reference as well. If that's correct, that's what you want then you can just hit enter. Now, I want to do the same thing for all these months. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, select B6 with the white block, and then I'm going to grab my little black crosshair, and I'm going to copy that all the way across through December, and then release. And Excel will automatically add that for me. Now, if I want to check this, what I can do is I can double click inside any of these cells. It shows me the range, it's highlighted. It shows me the cell reference. And in the formula bar, it also shows me the cell reference. If I like that, I can just hit enter and um, it takes me out of the cell. Um, so that is in there. Now, here's also another difference. I can see whether you use a formula or you just type in the answer. So here, we typed in these numbers in C4. Up in your formula bar, I can see the numbers right there. In C6, we used a formula function. And if I click in cell C6, I don't see this answer. I see the formula you created. So it's a very easy way for me to tell on your exams um, or any other work that I have you turn in through Excel whether you are actually typing in the numbers or you just happen to be um, whether you're typing in the numbers or you're actually using the formulas. So that's one way I wanted to be aware that you guys can see the difference between typing in numbers and looking, using a formula. So there's that. Now, I want to do the same thing down here. So let me make B17 the active cell. Um, and let's say I already know I want to add all the way across. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use my white block cross and I'm going to select um, from B17 all the way to M17 first. And then I'm going to click my auto sum button. And there we go. So I have my calculations already in there. So instead of creating one formula and copying across, I selected my area first and then put my formula in. Again, multiple ways you can do this. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to come and make N for my active cell. And I'm going to use that white block cross again. And I'm going to highlight my range from N4 to N6 and click on Auto Sum. Same thing for this bottom side. I want to get all my numbers in there. So again, I'm going to highlight all of the cells first because I know I'm going to get, um, I'm going to add them all up. And then I'm going to click my Auto Sum button. So it's all added at the same time. Enter a formula using the keyboard. The net for each month, which will appear in row 19, is equal to the income total in row 6 minus the expense total in row 17. The formula needed in the worksheet is noted in the requirements as net row 19 equals income row 6 minus expenses row 17. Let me show you how to enter this formula. We will be using the keyboard this time. So go ahead and select cell B19 to make it the active cell. As we type, 
every formula begins with an equal sign. So go ahead and type equals. B6. As I typed the B, you saw this um, list come up of formulas that I might be looking for. None of those are correct. I want to um, select a cell. So as I type that 6, you'll see that this cell is highlighted as I do that. And I'm going to subtract B. Again, there's my list. 17. Now my cell B17 is highlighted. And I can just hit enter. And now it has subtracted that for me. Let's go ahead and copy that same formula all the way across. Next, we're going to do some formatting. You format a worksheet to emphasize certain entries and make the worksheet easier to read and understand. The font, or font face, defines the appearance and shape of the letters, numbers, and special characters. Examples of fonts include Calibri, Cambria, Times New Roman, Arial, and Courier. Font style indicates how the characters are emphasized. Common font styles include regular, bold, underline, and italic. The font size specifies the size of the characters. Font size is gauged by a measurement system called points. Excel has a wide variety of font colors from which to choose to define the colors of the characters. When Excel first runs, the default font for the entire workbook is Calibri. With a font size, font style, and font color of 11 point regular black. You can change the font characteristics in a single cell a range of cells, the entire worksheet, or the entire workbook. To change a cell style. A cell style is a predefined font, font size, and font color that you can apply to a cell. Click A1 to make it the active cell. Click the Cell Styles button on the Home tab to display the Cell Styles gallery. Point to the title, Cell Style. Again, you've got that preview so you can look at some others. And then click Title Cell. Click Cell A2 to make it the active cell. Click your font arrow. Change it to Calibri Light. Go back into cell A1, and let's make this bold. Well, we're also going to make A2 bold. We're also going to change the uh, font size of A2 to 14. I can use this uh, drop down box here and scroll till I get to 14. I can also use this increase font size button until I get to 14. So either one of those will do. Now let's change the color of a cell entry. Click cell A1 and we're going to change the font color to, let's see, Orange accent two. There we go. Same thing for cell A2. Let's go ahead and make that orange accent two. Center cell entries across columns by merging cells. The final step in formatting the worksheet title and subtitle is to center them across columns A through N. Why do we do this? Centering a title across the columns used in the body of the worksheet improves the worksheet's appearance. 
Merging cells involves creating a single cell by combining two or more selected cells. Select cell A1. Right now, if I were to, to click in B1 and start typing, that's what it will look like because everything right now is typed into cell A1. I'm going to delete my B1. When I do that, you see A1. It does not actually go across from A1 to E1. It's all actually in A1 right now. So what I need to do is make it expand and centered from A1 to N1. So I will select using my white block from A1 to N1. And then I'm going to select my Merge and Center button. And that makes A1 through N1 actually one cell. If I try and click in B1, I can no longer do it. So this is actually all one cell now. If you accidentally, instead of choosing the white block, choose the black crosshair and try and pull it all the way across to N1, N2, this is what it will look like. You basically copied that first thing from what's in A2 and copied all the way across. So we don't want to do that. So make sure you don't do that one. But just in case, I wanted to show you what it looks like if you accidentally did that. So now let's merge and center A2. Make sure you have that white block. Highlight from A2 to N2. And again, click Merge and Center. Very good. I'm going to undo this and show you one more thing. If I only selected from A2 to C2 and then clicked Merge and Center, that's what it would look like. And that, we, that does not look good. So I'm going to click Undo. And again, all the way across my whole worksheet, Merge and Center. Format rows using cell styles. Click cell A3 and then drag to N3. Click your cell styles button and select heading 1. While these are still selected, let's click just the center button. This will center the content within each of these individual cells. There we are. It's okay if you can't see them. Now select A8 through N8, cell styles, heading 1. Select A6 through N6. cell styles and choose the total cell style. Do the same thing for A17 through N17. I realize I have typed an error here. That should be total. And this should be miscellaneous. So let me fix that right quick. There we go. Select A19 through N19. Let's choose cell styles. And choose accent 2. Select A4 through N4. And then hold down your control key on your keyboard and select A9 through N9, A11 through N11, A13, N13, A15 to N15. Click on cell styles and select 20 accent 2. Select the remaining cells rows except for the total columns and now we will select in cell styles the 40% accent 2. 